Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for welcoming me to your beautiful, beautiful church. I didn't know that I would have such beautiful singing, the band, the choir, um, just lovely. And um, I want to thank Reverend Kim and Carol. They have been so, um, so wonderful and so supportive. And all of you have been so supportive over the years to Quincy Public School students, particularly those who I work with on a daily basis, um, and I'm just so happy to be here this morning. I have to tell you, as a, as a Quincy girl at heart, I don't live in Quincy now, my mom still does, but um, walking into this church, it, it really brings back a lot of memories. This was my, uh, I went to Quincy Point Middle School, well, it was junior high back then, because I'm pretty old, but, um, and I went through Quincy High, but I came here in seventh grade, um, the middle school, the junior high, had dances here, and this was my first seventh grade dance, <laughs> coming into one of these halls here, and for a um, gawky, very quiet, shy, um, introverted girl, I had my first slow dance in this, this church, very, very, very dear, but, um, so it's just, just wonderful, and it brings back a lot of wonderful memories for me, so thank you very much, but, um, so I just wanted to come today and tell you a little bit um, about the populations of students that I work with. Um, and as Carol gave in the background, it's a varied, um, it's a varied population. I work with um, students who she had said uh, could be pregnant or parenting, and we do have a couple. Luckily, the numbers are down. Um, I work with students who have been removed from their homes for abuse, neglect, um, a lot of horrible things, and um, they've been removed from their homes and then they need to continue in Quincy Public Schools, so I am the contact through Department of Children and Families and I work with the students and you know, make sure they have what they need to continue um, in school successfully. And I work with um, students, my main population, who fall under a federal law called McKinney-Vento, and you'll see that you know, in, the, um, in the pamphlet as well. And that basically um, ensures that any children who are suffering from homelessness, and homelessness you know, runs a big gamut. Um, it's students who have lost their family housing due to eviction, um, due to weather-related issues, um, you know, just uh, maybe mental illness, maybe, you know, there's a lot of different factors why a person becomes homeless, and that's a whole nother, you know, talk, I guess, another day. But um, this past year, we had a very, probably my most difficult month of March ever, um, and we had various, with the four nor'easters that Quincy experienced in the flooding. Um, we had over 30 families that were displaced in the matter of a night, um, who were placed at hotels, who were scattered all around different communities. Um, so that was a very difficult time. So fires, um, if a family in Quincy experiences a fire and, um, and there are a number of fires in Quincy, you know, sadly, there are, every year. Um, last year was a tough year. We had a lot of fires and families got um, displaced due to fire. So many, many vast reasons. Um, some families are what we call doubled up, and doubled up means that they, they lost their permanent housing for some reason, and now maybe they're staying with um, family or friends in the area, or maybe in a different um, community other than Quincy. We still want those kids to continue at Quincy Public Schools. Um, and, you know, we have, we deal with drug addiction a lot. We deal with <coughs> various forms of substance abuse. Um, so the, you know, a lot of our children are very traumatized, you know, experiencing homelessness that's experiencing trauma. So we try to, like I said, maintain school stability and do whatever we can. And then the other group I wanted to mention, which I know some of you are, are familiar with, um, and they're all near and dear to my heart, but I think the ones that I really, you know, really touch me the most are my unaccompanied high school students. And for those of you who may not know, an unaccompanied student um, is, a student, 
primarily in their senior year, it could possibly be their junior year, but it's usually senior year of high school, who um, have had to leave their home and are what we call couch surfing. Basically going from one home to another, maybe a friend's taking them in for a week, maybe another family member's taking them in for a couple weeks, but um, they don't have a place to call home. And you know, most of the time people always say, well, were they, you know, quote, bad kids and did they leave because they were using drugs or they weren't, you know, obeying the family's rules? And it's the exact opposite. Like, if you could flip it, it's, it's more those issues were with the parents or guardians that they were living with um, and they had to leave. Um, many times it's female students that um, were living with mom and mom's boyfriend or boyfriends and things were happening and they it was no longer safe for them to stay there so they left um, you know mom believed the boyfriend and you know there's just so many different different stories but they are probably the most resilient strong students that I mean I, I don't think I could do or my kids um, you know, could do what, what these kids do, but they still strap that backpack on, come to school every day. Um, sometimes everything they possess is in their backpack, everything. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a really, it's a really tough population to work with, but I, you know, I, I try to do everything, everything possibly that I can in bringing people to support them because I always tell them, you can't graduate, you can't drop out, and so far, no, I don't know if I should be doing this, sorry, <laughs> knocking on wood, but, um, but so far we, we, have a, we have a perfect record that, you know, anyone that's been identified as being unaccompanied, um, dropping out of school isn't, an, it's just not an option. You know, you're finishing school, we'll do everything we can, um, you know, providing many of the things that all of you so kindly donate. Um, I work with them and do their financial aid. Um, we do college. I go on college visits with them. I talk to admissions people, financial aid, and we get these kids. The, and most of them do want to go on to school. Most of them want to go on to college. And, you know, as an educator myself, that's something I really try to stress that that's their way to break this cycle of homelessness is to further their education. Once in a while, um, you know, I have a student that, you know, they want to enter the military, which is wonderful. So, you know, we go see Marine recruiters or we go sign up at the Army or uh, National Guard. Um, but most of them do want to attend college. A few, very few, go into the work, you know, go straight into um, the work fields. But, um, but most of them go on to college. And they do great with support and with love and with nurturing. And I have wonderful groups that I'm in contact with that help these kids after they graduate high school because every year I'm getting new students. So, you know, and just because they've graduated from Quincy High or North Quincy High or one of our alternative programs and they're in college doesn't mean they don't need support in college. So I'm pretty active with um, some colleges in the area. Um, Bridgewater State uh, University is one of the leaders and we work with them. In fact, I have a student who was unaccompanied, probably went through some of the worst neglect and abuse that we could ever imagine. Things that adults should never go through and I have a 17 and 18 year old going through these things. Um, and she, um, she is a student at Bridgewater State now. She's in her second year. And um, we had, I am in contact with some of the people that have a social, um, social service, social justice areas of Bridgewater State and they have a scholarship every year. So this student received the scholarship. So she's at Bridgewater State. They only pick one student. We had to have a go for interviews and do recommendations. So she's attending Bridgewater State absolutely free now. She's an RA, a resident advisor in her dorm. She doesn't pay for tuition, books, anything. She's a peer leader. She was very active at the high school um, that she graduated from. She was a role model in high school and just was living all these different places because of these horrible things. Um, 
but she's a perfect example of what help, support, support from the community, because it's not just me, because I can't do it by myself. You know, I wish I could. I wish I was a Bill Gates and could say here, you know, but it's not just money that they need. They need a lot of support. So, um, again, it's due to everyone, you know, here and in the community. Quincy, I'm very, very fortunate as a Quincy gal at heart to work with so many wonderful faith-based um, organizations, such as this, this beautiful church, um, others in the area, uh, social service agencies. Um, you know, very, very lucky that we can do what we do with these students and support these students and hold their hands and give them clothing and give them a bottle of shampoo. Sometimes I'll give bottles of shampoo and conditioner to a homeless high school kid, and it's like I gave them a winning lottery ticket. Um, it's just, you know, the, and, and then what's even more um, touching, and I always say I wish the people that do so much and support, I can't because of confidentiality, obviously, but, um, you know, I wish you could meet some of these kids because they're so appreciative of everything that all of you and all the community members do. Probably the most appreciative group of um, students that I work with. Um, they have this fortitude and this grit and this hope that things will change in their lives. And it's because of all of you and the things that you do in the community that it does make a difference. Now, sometimes you write a check and you say, you know, my husband's always saying, you know, wait, let's contribute to this. Let's, con you know, and we've been contributing to the United Way for probably a million years, and we have a lot of different things. And I always say, I hope it gets to the right, I hope it gets to the right people. Like, I hope it trickles down. I hope it really, I don't mind contributing, but everyone works hard. I'm sure all of you work extremely hard here. And if you are donating, you want you want to know that what you're donating, whether it's your time, your effort, your money, it is making a difference. And I can assure all of you here that when you do things at Christmas, or when you do a back to school drive, or you do anything that you do, and it's not just for Quincy Public Schools, I know you help out interfaith social services and other communities, um, but speaking for Quincy Public Schools, when you do something, for me, for my group of students, it's, it's life-changing because it's showing them that a total stranger, a, a totally you know, unique group of people that have never met them want to help, that they care. And a lot of these students, they haven't had anyone care. So um, it means a lot, and I really couldn't be more appreciative. And I'll just keep plugging along with the thanks of you know all of you and um, and thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Well, we thank you, Leslie, for all of the hard work that you do in helping to spearhead these programs for our, our youth, our young people, those who are in, in need. And we, you are the face of that program, and we thank you so much for being with us today. I know, unfortunately, you have to leave right away after church, but if anyone has any questions for Leslie, um, let either Carol or me know, and we'll make sure that you get that and, and answer those questions if you can. And because of all that we do for our community and for the city of Quincy, we continue to give sacrificially and in love. And now our offering of our gifts will be gathered. <laughs> 